So, good evening, everyone. So, today I'm going to conduct your uh, NBTL problem solving and doubt clearing session for week 10. So, today we'll be focusing on two port networks and uh, we will study some theory regarding two port networks and then we will uh, look into some sums uh, which are related to two port networks. So, let me share my screen. So you guys are able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So today we continuing week 10. We'll be looking into two port networks. So what is a two port network? Can anyone tell? Hmm? Sir, the network consists of four pairs of terminals. Uh, yes. sir, two pairs of terminals or four terminals. Hmm. Uh, you know, two, one, uh, two terminals input terminal, two terminals output terminal. Okay. That type of circuit is known as two port circuit. Achha. The two port circuit generates from both the sides. Okay. Alright. So, this is your two port network. But you have forgotten something which is very important. What is that? Important is there some in this two port network, something important should some important assumption or consideration should be followed. What is that? There should be no internal source. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Hmm. So suppose there is some voltage V1 here. There is some voltage V2 here. There is some current I1 here. There is some current I2 flowing over here. Okay, so this forms a two-port network. So, a two port network network can be anything like some rest R1 here, R2 here, R3 here. Okay. Okay. So this is your two port network, okay? Okay. So if you look at so can this be considered a two port network? That? Can this be considered to be a two-port network? The source is the dependent source. The, uh, the source inside the two-port network is a depending source. So it may be considered. So it can be considered, okay. Okay. Because it depends upon the input and output voltage. Suppose it depends on, okay. Suppose we have a network which is like this. So just consider there's this current I3 over here. Okay. And instead of phi I1, this is phi I3. Then is it a two-port network? 
no sir no sir the i3 is the network current not the fourth current so it depends on the network current i3 so okay i3 can be found from the i1 so that yeah. that can also the rest the rest yeah. So I3 can be uh, find from the I1. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes sir. Oh. Then what about Farhan? You don't have any doubts or anything to say? But sir, in the network, we don't know what elements are inside the two-port network. Yeah. Oh, in which network? If it is a specific network, the it will be considered as a two port network. Okay. No, no. Could you repeat your question again? Like, what do you mean? Uh, sir, um, Network. Mm, actually, sorry, it was getting cut. Could you repeat again once? Uh, sir, um, the um, two port network the inside part is the inside part elements are the black money in across the black. We don't know the what type of um, element is highly connected. You may specify circuit that are connected in T or dependent work. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So your doubt is you have a you have a black box like this, right? And you have one wire yes, sir. another another wire, another wire. So this is your V1, this is your V2. And you are saying you don't know whether there'll be any dependent uh whether there'll be any independent voltage source inside or not, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. So to my knowledge, if at all there should be a dependent, like there should be an independent source, they one option is it could there could be a battery inside. Okay. There could be a battery inside which might be there. Otherwise, usually for if there should be some power supply, there should be some wire to connect. If there is no power being supplied, like if there is no external power being applied. And in one circuit, it cannot just have a power. It cannot just have a source. The source is always external. If there's a battery, then it makes the situation different. But battery also will have some sort of finite power, source of energy, right? So you can consider that there is no independent source present inside your network. Hmm. Because you just, there is an any network, it requires some sort of power. And power cannot just be stored infinitely for long duration inside a network like that. That is not possible, right? There should be some wire coming out of that network, which will be connected to some source, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Sir? Uh -huh. hmm. Okay, so now we will see. So basically, your two port network. I'll rub this. Here, there can be some voltage source. Okay, there could be some load, there could be anything connected. But you have a plus minus V1 and the current I1 flowing in. You have plus minus V2 and current I2 flowing in into your two-port network, okay? Now, there, is, there are different ways in which we represent these networks. How many ways do you, have you guys been taught? Sir, four types. Open circuit parameter, 
Third is third is hybrid parameters. And the last one is ABCD parameters. Yes, sir. Sir, another one is there. Inverse hybrid parameters. ABCD, yes, sir. Sir, another para parameter is there, known as conductance parameter, G parameter, but inverse hybrid parameter. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, that is not required for us right now. These are all the syllabus for this course. Yes, okay. So, open circuit parameters, they're also known as Z parameters, right? Z parameter. Impotence parameter. Okay. And short circuit parameter. Y parameter. Admittance parameter, Y parameter. Okay. So, why is I it? Eight parameter. Uh, sorry. So, why is it known as open circuit parameters? Um, because... Because in both the side we are applying the current source, um, and when we are applying the current source, 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 okay. Uh, I don't know why your network is bad. Uh, are others also facing it like that? Are others also yeah, finding what is supposed to be cutting? No, so when, when you are speaking, it's fine for me. But when Hota is speaking, it's, it's like that. Yeah, I can't hear him properly. Okay, okay. All right. So, okay. So I, I'll repeat. I think I Hota is saying the right thing only, but I'll just repeat what it is told. So you have a two port network like this. All right. What for Z parameters the relation is V1, V2 is equal to Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22, I1, I2. So I write the equations first. So you, you have your V1 and your I1. You have your V2 and your I2. Okay. So you write your V1 as I1 into Z11 plus I2 into Z12. And your V2 is I1 into Z21 plus I2 into Z22. So these are your equations. So to write it simply, you write it in terms of matrices. So you write it like this. V1, V2 is equal to Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22, I1, I2. Okay. Any doubts in yes, this? Sir. No, sir. No, sir. So you must remember Matt, why how it is coming, right? Z11 into I1 plus Z12 into I2 is your V1. Okay. Similarly, your V2 is Z21 into I1 and Z22 into I2. So these two equations, we are combining it in the form of a matrix. In matrix representation, it is coming. Okay, so now it is known as open circuit parameters because, so when the, this is open circuited, okay? Okay, this is not proper. Suppose I apply a voltage source V1 over here, okay? And this is left open circuited. So what will be the current I2 here? The second- Zero set. So I2 will be zero. zero. So when your I2 is zero, what you get? Your V1 is comes out to be Z11 I1, and your V2 comes out to yes, be sir. Z2 I1. So you get your Z11 is V1 
v1 upon i1 and your z21 is v2 upon i1 at what condition the condition when your i2 is, is equal to v0 i2 equal to 0 that implies it is un under open circuit conditions open circuit conditions yes sir hmm. sir that's sir uh, that's if we are applying them for um, current flow and then we can only when we are applying the superposition principle to find the z1 then we can circuit the current flows uh, you are saying if you put a current source and you do it, huh? Yes, sir. sir if, uh, we are applying the superposition theorem. By superposition theorem, we find out this equation. Uh. Uh. Sir, here the I1 and I2 are the dependent sources. Um, uh, um, and uh, uh, B1, B2, sir, B1, B2 is the dependent source. And I1 and I2 is the independent source. B1 and V2 value depend upon the I1 and I2 value. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, depend on the variable itself. B1 and V2 is the dependent variable. I1 and I2 is the independent variable. So B1 and V2 value depends upon the value of the I1 and I2. Okay. So you are saying V1 and V2 will change if I1 and I2 change? De Yeah, the yes, sir, yes, sir. Two current sources. Yes, sir. No, if you put current sources also, see, when you're doing this, you must consider in terms of an experiment that you are given a black box and you're told to find the Z parameters. How will you do? What is a simple way? Simple way is you just open circuit, right? You open circuit B2. Yes, sir. You can measure one, you can measure I1. Your I2 has to be zero. Okay. So it makes it simple. That is why this is the preferred way. Hmm. Sir, what is the yes, Z11, Z12? Are there four impedances? That, does that mean? Sir, these are the input driving and output driving impedance. Z11 is the input driving impedance. Z22 is the output driving impedance. And Z12, Z21 is the uh, input and output transfer impedance. Yeah, so actually they are, it is not like it is a physically present, like there is some impedance of Z12, some Z21, etc. No, it's like some effective impedance you're seeing. So if you draw the circuit, if you draw, so what happens, you found these parameters, okay, you found Z11, Z12 something. Now you want to simulate it, if you want to simulate it, how you draw is, this will be your Z11, okay, and <coughs> this will be your I2 into Z12. So this is your plus minus V1, okay. This is your plus minus I1 Z21. This is your Z22, and this is your V2. This is your I2. This is I1. Okay. So this is like how you draw an effective network. From these equations, you can draw a particular circuit to represent the behavior of this two-port network. Okay. This is drawn in terms of Z parameters. All right. It doesn't mean that actually there is one Z11 or there is actually some Z22 of this magnitude. It doesn't mean that. It's just a way to represent uh -huh. it. Yes, sir. Now it's good. Yeah. So this is for <laughs> open circuit parameters or Z parameters. We will look into Y parameters or admittance parameters. So your Y parameters, the equations are I1 equals I1 equals Y1. And I equal to V1 plus V2. Yeah. So I1 is Y21 V1 plus Y1 to V2. And I2 is Y21 V1 plus Y22 V2. Okay. This is how the equations are there. And this is how it is written. And so 
one more thing you must note down, you must remember is this the dimension of like if you see here Z11, Z12, all these. Okay, one minute, just let me write down. So you have this equation I1 is Y11 V1 plus Y12 V2. So what is the dimension of Y11 V1? Yeah, I, it will be I now, ampere. Yeah, it will come from ampere. And what is the dimension of I12? That will also be in ampere. No, Y12 for Y12. Only Y12. So Y12? No. Hmm. And this is a mutual current between coil A and hmm? and it is a coil ampere. Oh, okay. I mean, Y12 is actually ohm inverse. Okay, ohm inverse or it is Siemens. So more rate it is Siemens. Um, oh, sorry, Bob. Oh, sorry, sir. Sir, you are asking the units. So, oh. okay, this is like so. Basically, you must understand that there is some certain dimension. It is not just some value. Okay, you must understand. You cannot add length plus velocity. You cannot add. That is not possible, right? You can add only currents. You can add current and current. You can add or voltage and voltage. You can add. No. Huh. So just that I wanted to tell you. Yeah, Mo, I think, is the symbol, if I'm not wrong. Mo, I think, yes, is the sir, symbol yes, of... Mo, also. Siemens is the, type, is the unit. So, this is your Y parameters. Uh, so, if you... Now, what is the relation between your Y parameters and Z parameters? Uh, uh, the okay, so I think you guys know it very well. So this matrix, this matrix will represent as a matrix Y. Okay. And this matrix, we will represent it as a matrix Z. So it can be no I1, I2 is this matrix Y, Y into V1, V2. And we also know V1, V2 is your matrix Z into I1, I2, okay? Yeah. So, if you uh, pre-multiply this by Y inverse, that is, you put it Y inverse, I1, I2 is equal to Y inverse into Y, into V1, V2. So this you can further write it as Y inverse I1, I2 is actually equal to V1, V2. Why? Because Y inverse Y is 1. Or it, Y inverse Y is your identity matrix which multiplied by V1, V2 comes out to be V1, V2. So when you compare this and this, you will get your matrix Z is actually your matrix Y inverse. Okay. Uh, so we will this is for two port network. Okay, two port networks. So what will be the uh, dimensions of Z this matrix Z 
what will be the dimensions of this matrix? 2 cross 2. 2 cross 2. What will be the dimension of y? Yeah, same 2 cross 2. 2 cross 2. And now how do you find the inverse of a 2 cross 2 matrix? So to find the inverse of a 2 cross 2 matrix is a bit simple. But I'll ask you guys in game. So suppose you have a matrix, uh, let us say F. It has the parameters A, B, C, D. So what will be your F inverse? B minus B minus C and A. D minus B minus C and A, okay, and uh, in, uh, multiplied by the uh, inverse of mm -hmm. a determinant of the matrix A D minus B C. Okay, so it is best written as. D minus B minus C A upon A D minus B C. The determinant of it. Not a determinant. Ah, the determinant of it. It is not uh, mod. Mod will not be there. So it is A D minus B C. Okay. So if it's a negative value, it will be multiplying with negative value. Yeah, yeah, it will be negative value. Okay, so you must understand for a matrix. If suppose I have a matrix three, four, five, six, and you multiply it by minus one, it will be converted to minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Okay. The entire operation has to be done for each and every element of the matrix. Okay. Okay. This because uh, for determinant and all there are different ways. Uh, determinant and all you can multiply one thing and leave other thing all that something properties are there but for a matrix if you do some operation for one element you have to do it for all the elements hmm. okay. so that you must keep in mind so that is done now we will consider some other types of parameters so we'll go to third set of parameters that is H parameters or hybrid parameters so why are they called hybrid parameters Both the combination of I and B. Combination of current and voltage, right? Both people have in same equations we can have both current and voltage values. Or in the voltage. input values into the output values. But here also it is like this now. Here also in this equation, both voltage and current both are there. What is it? Yeah, yeah, but in this in the same matrix for the for example, I one and I two there is a matrix, right? In that huh? there will be V one and I I one. Okay. So both the input ports, whatever the values are there, will be. Since actually hybrid parameters is given by V one I two. Okay, H one one H one two. H21, H22, I1, V2. Okay. So, it is like, it's combination of voltage and current of the input and output ports. It's like that. Okay. It is not, the, not just the voltages and currents of the same port. It is not the, only the voltages of a port or only the currents of a port. It is a combination of voltage and current of input and output port at a time. Okay, so that's why it is known as hybrid parameters. And uh, can you tell what is the dimension of H11? H11 is resistance. Oh. Known. Okay, for H12? H12 will not have any. So it is dimension. Dimension. What is dimension of H21? Uh, again, it's dimensionless. Okay. What is the dimension of H22? H22 is 
so suppose this is our transmission line okay this is your v1 this is your i1 this is some your load okay this is your v2 this is your i load okay but this is your minus i load so abcd parameters are like this is your sending in and this is your receiving in so you are sending power from here to here okay so abcd parameters are widely used in power systems how many of you have studied power systems till now Not yet. Not yet. Oh, you are the one in second year. Yes, sir. And Shubha Kamota, Mia Farhan. You guys have not studied power systems. Hmm. Mia Farhan, Kamota. Yes, sir. I'm I am studying sir power system. Okay, so you studied ABCD parameters. Have you studied ABCD parameters? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what? So actually, these ABCD parameters you guys have studied for your transmission line. So yes, the sir, transmission. Yes, sir. Basically, uh, transmission line is a combination of inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, all that. So, that entire thing you represent in terms of ABCD parameters instead of the actual value of inductor, capacitor, everything. It is just like a representation of it. Okay. So, so this is you widely used in power systems. Another thing to take keep in mind is your I load is in the sending out direction. So you usually write it as V one is equal to A into A into V two plus B into I load, and you write I one is equal to C into V two plus D into I load. But since our convention is I two should go inside, okay, this is I two, I two is going inside, and I two is opposite of minus I load. We write it as V one is equal to A V two plus minus D into I two, and I one is equal to C V two plus minus D into I two. So what is the dimension of A over here and B? What is the dimension of A, B, C, and D? A will be dimensionless. Okay. B will be O. Okay. C will be Simon in work of form. Okay. D will be again. All right. Okay. So these are certain parameters you can get for transmission line, and uh, so why are there so many different parameters? Why can't we just use one kind of parameter and proceed? Why are there so many? Yeah. Huh? 
for different kind of systems or maybe some kind of the different kind of systems which we are going to perform the operations okay yeah so some set of parameters are useful when we are studying something or when we want to represent a behavior in some particular manner like z parameters will be useful if we are studying multiple there are two two board networks connected in series z parameters will be useful if they are connected parallel then y parameters are useful etc okay so in that manner they are there they are things and in uh, this uh, ABCD parameters is used in power systems a lot. So they find the uh, characteristic impedance of the line and uh, all those various things. They find it in terms of the uh, ABCD parameters. And they depend on the length of the line, then the inductance per unit length, capacitance per unit length. Based on all these things, they calculate and they find it. Okay. So those are all very in the ways in which they use these set of parameters to represent uh, certain parts of the real life network. Hybrid parameters is used for in, for in BJT, bipolar junction transistors, to represent a small signal model. Okay. So now, uh, let us look into some sums. Uh, so can you guys see this? Yes, sir. So what is given over here? There are two two port networks. Okay. So B1 what one is huh? B1 is connected, D3 is left open. Okay. But output of B2 is directly given into the input of V. They are given some sort of equations. So those equations can represent the network in what parameters? A, B, C, D parameters. Okay, A, B, C, D parameters, right? So now, um, they have told us to first find the Thevenin voltage seen from port 3. If we, so if to find the Thevenin voltage, what should we do? What should we consider? Resistance, there are any Uh-huh. In Temnance here, if when you want to find Temnance voltage for Temnance theorem, what do we do? Open circuit voltage, right? Measure open circuit. Yes, open circuit voltage. And what do we do to the sources? Do we leave it on? Do we short it? Do we open it? Leave it on. The source will leave it on. Okay, so we leave it on. Okay, for tenants here, we leave it on. Tenants voltage. So, We leave it on. So one thing is we know I3 is equal to zero. If I3 is equal to zero, 
and then what will be your V2 and I2? Can you repeat it again? If I, now I3 is 0, so what will be your V2 and I2 in terms of V3? I3 0, V2 by V3 will be 7. No, V2 is equal to 7, V3. What is your yeah, V2 by V3. I2 is equal to 8 V3. Okay, I2 is equal to 8 V3. Right. Eight. So now, now what what do we what is given to us? We are given that V1 is equal to 16. And what do we want to find? Seven is what is VTH. Uh, we want to find 10 means what is VTH and then 10 means what is VTH actually is V3, right? Sorry, the tenant voltage VTH is actually your V3, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what do we do is we will substitute the value of V2 and I2 in my V1. So, my V1 is actually equal to 9 V2 plus 6 I2. So, my V1 is equal to 9 into V2. What is my V2 given as? 9 into 7 V3. Plus six into I two that is eight V three. Eight V eight three. Eight V right? Eight V three. Not V two. So your V one will be equal to sixty three V three plus forty eight V three. What is the sum of this? One one one. So one 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 V three. So your V3 is actually equal to V1 upon V1 by 111. What is your V1 given? V1 is equal to 60. 60. 60 divided by 111. So what is your V3 given? 0. 0.5404. How much? Point? 0. 0.5405. 5405. Volt, right? Yeah. Now, assume you need to find the terminal current. The Norton's current you have to find. The Norton current you have to find for this network. So let me write it again. So, how do we select? Um, Now you have to find Norton's current. So how will we solve this then? How to solve this? So the, uh, short circuit the uh, port three terminal. That is V3 equal to zero. So we short circuit it. So your V3 is equal to zero. So what is your V2 and I2 given then as? Uh, sir, V2 equal to six into I3. Okay. And I2 equal to nine I3. Okay. Then what do you do? Then sir, Put the value of uh, I will put the value of uh, V2 I2 in the equation V1 I1. Okay. Now what do we do? Now we put V1 is equal to 9 V2 that is 6 I3. 
plus six into nine I think. So I will get V one is equal to what is nine into six? Six. Fifty four I three. Fifty four I three. And six into nine is fifty four I three. Fifty four. One zero eight I three. In one zero eight I three. So yes, what is the value of I three? I three I three equal to V one by one zero eight. Fifty by one zero eight. I three is equal to V one. By one zero eight. By one zero eight. Sixty by one zero eight, and how much is that? Uh, you guys don't have calculator. What? Point five five. That is point five five. What? Point five five what? Ampere. Ampere. Point five five ampere. <coughs> now, next part of the question is you must find a Tevlin resistance. So, what is the Tevlin resistance? Ah, is equal to voltage by ISC. Tevlin is voltage by not in the ISC. Right. What is the value of ETH? 0.5405. 0.5405. 0.5405. And this is 0 0.55. So, what is your terminal resistance? Zero point nine eight two seven. Zero point nine eight two seven. Then what? Zero point nine eight two seven. What? Ohm sir, ohm. Okay. Any query still here? No sir. No. No. What will we have for a? No credits. Okay. So we'll go to the next question. I'm actually a bit sick today, that's why I'm not talking too much, okay? No, no worries. Mm -hmm. So, they have told us to find the Z parameters. So you are told to find the Z parameters for this network. How will you find it? Write it in a math. Uh, I take uh, open circuit in the second side. I two equal to zero. Okay. So we can find Z one one and Z Z two one. Okay. Achha. So you're saying make I2 is equal to 0. Then what you must do? How will you know what is your V2? Huh? You have made I2 is equal to 0, but how will you know what is the value of V2? What is the value of how will you find Z1 and Z2? Sir, B, sir, we found the value of B2 by applying the KVL in open loop. Okay. 
वी टू फोर बी वन सर वी टू प्लस फोर बी वन इज इक्वल टू मन के बी एल इक्वल टू जीरो स्टोर You apply K V L over here, right? So you what you get V two minus four V one minus four I equal to zero. I two zero. So no sir. Huh? Sir, only sir. So this is not there. Okay, not there. Then here minus. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. No sir. Minus four into I one. Huh? Minus four into I one. Huh? Is equal to zero. Okay. So what do we get? We get. What do you want in terms of I one and I two, right? Okay. The terms are not there just because I two is zero, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. You are saying we are getting V two. So plus four V one plus four I two. So what is your Z one one Z one two? सर भाई फोर आई टू ओ इस बी फोर आई वन राइट एस सर फोर आई वन ओके माइनस राइट नो इन ए माइनस फोर नहीं आया वन एंड एवरी गोस टू द नेक्स्ट साइड बिकॉज़ पॉजिटिव एस सर दिस इस प्लस इस माइनस नाउ टेल मी व्हाट इस योर जेड वन जेड वन टू सर जेड वन वन कैन बी सिंपली फाउंड बाय भी वन बाय आई वन थ्री एंड फोर डिस्टेंस एंड सीरीज सेकंड सीरीज ओपन सर्किटेड सो भी वन बाय आई वन इक्वल टू डायरेक्टली सेवन डेट इज योर जेड वन वन तो जेड वन इक्वल टू सेवन वन Then not applying so it not required to apply the KVL to find Z11. Okay, then what do you have to do? Sir, just main first loop. If you are applying KVL, then V1 by I1 equal to seven. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 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 But how do you know what is Z one two? Yes, sir. Z one two. Z one two equal to B one by I I two. Hmm. Sorry, but why it is plus four? I was here. So over here, over here. Yeah, the second step. So no, it is V two minus four minus four I one, right? So your V two is when it goes to the right hand side, it becomes four V one plus four I one, right? Sir, by applying the KVL, sir, we know here yeah, for V two minus four B one minus four I one. From this, we can find the Z two one. You can find the Z. Um, sir, uh, here V two equal to Um, okay, B2 okay. by I1 by. No. Um, you know, so a better, easier way is to solve this entire circuit. Better way is you solve the entire circuit. Okay, so you have this is your I2. Okay, this is your I1. So. Uh, let us rub all this. We will not take any assumption, anything as zero, anything. We will just leave them as it is. So what we will solve is, we will get V one 
माइनस थ्री आई वन माइनस फोर ओम इंटू आई वन प्लस आई टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो राइट सो आई गेट बी वन इज इक्वल टू थ्री आई वन प्लस फोर इंटू आई वन प्लस आई टू सो माय वी वन इज एक्चुअली इक्वल टू सेवन आई वन प्लस फोर आई टू दिस इज माय इक्वेशन ए इफ यू सी दिस इज वेरी वेरी सिमिलर टू जेड वन वन आई वन प्लस जेड वन टू आई टू यू गॉट इट राइट यू गॉट द वैल्यू सो जेड वन वन जेड वन टू राइट यस सर ओके माइनस फोर बी वन माइनस फोर इंटू आई टू माइनस फोर इंटू आई वन प्लस आई टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो माइनस फोर बी वन माइनस फोर आई टू माइनस फोर आई वन माइनस फोर आई टू इक्वल टू जीरो Plus eight, I two plus four I one. Any doubts in this? No sir. No sir. So I'll write it as four I one plus eight I two plus four V one. So what I will put V one I know is seven I one plus four I two. I substitute over here. So I get V two is equal to four I one plus eight I two. Plus four into seven i one plus four i two, right? So I get v two i one plus i i two i one plus twenty eight i one plus sixteen i two plus twenty eight i one plus sixteen i two. When I add it, I will get it. Thirty two i one twenty four i two twenty four i two. This is my equation B. So I get my v one v two equal to seven four thirty two twenty four i one i two. So I got my parameters. Yes, sir. Seven four thirty two twenty four. Okay. Yes, sir. Hmm. Now, uh, now suppose I ask you guys to find what are the h parameters for this. How will you find? Are we? I know the equations. I write the equations. Mm -hmm. H one on equal to v one by i one. So you know. So you know. These are your equations, right? Yes, yes sir. Now, um, you have to make modifications. Actually, and write um equals this. Ah, uh, so what you can do is you can do I two minus H two one I one. Is equal to h two to v two, right? So you have your v two is equal to one upon is equal to minus h two one upon h two to i one plus one upon h two two into i two, right? But from the parameters, we know v two is equal to z two one i one plus z two two i two. Right. 
So your z21 is actually equal to minus h21 upon h22, and your z22 is equal to 1 upon h22. Okay. So now, what is our z22 is 24. So 24 is equal to 1 upon h22. So what is my h22 value? Point zero four one six. Point zero four one six. Okay. Now, your Z two one also is thirty two. So thirty two is equal to minus H two one into one upon H two two, right? So thirty two is equal to minus H two one into twenty four. So your H two one is actually equal to minus 32 upon 24, and that is equal to what? 1.33. Minus 1.33, okay, it is four by three, okay. Minus 1.33. Hmm. So now we got H21 and H22. Now we need to find H11 and H12. So we have, we already have V1, this H11 I1 plus H12 V2, right? Now V1 is equal to H11 I1. Someone saying something? No, sir, I just... Un okay, plus H12, what is your V2? We already have your V2 is equal to minus H21 upon H22 I1 plus 1 upon H22 I2. So I'll substitute that. So my V2 is equal to minus H21 upon H22 I1 plus I2 upon H22. So that is equal to your V1 is equal to H11 I1 minus of H12 into H21 upon H22 into I1 plus H12 upon H22 into I2. So your V1 is actually equal to H11 minus H12 into H21 upon H22 into I1 plus H12 upon H22 into I2. Okay. This when you compare it to V1 is equal to Z11 I1 plus Z12 I2, you will get Z11 is equal to H11 minus H12 into H21 upon H22. And your Z12 is equal to H12 into 1 upon H22. So what is your value of Z12? So remember, Z12 is actually equal to 4. So not wrong. So Z12 is 4. Okay. So that is 4 is equal to H12 into 1 upon H22. And your 1 upon H22 is actually equal to 24. 24. Your H12 is 4 upon 24. That is equal to 1 by 6. That comes out to be how much? 0. 0.166. That comes out to 0. 0.1667. Okay. Now, your Z11 is 7. Your H11 you need to find. Your H12 is actually equal to 1 by 6. Your H21 is actually, what is your H21 is? Minus 4 by 3. So minus 4 by 3. And your H22 is actually equal to 1 by 24. So this is equal to 7 is equal to H11. Minus and minus plus. So it is minus, so plus 24 into 4 upon 6 into 3. So that comes out to be. This is 4. So 7 equal to H11 plus 16 upon 3. So H11 is equal to 7 minus 16 upon 3. So it is 7 into 3 minus 16 upon 3. 7 into 3 is 21 minus 16 upon 3. So it is your H11 is actually equal to 5 upon 3, which is equal to 1.6667. Any doubts? Okay, so I'll do it again. 
I'll repeat it. We found V1, V2 in terms of I1, I2. Okay. So we have found what the Z, Z parameters of this net, two port network. Now I'm saying, you tell me what are the edge parameters of this network. So you can either again start solving and thinking or anything, or you can just directly convert these equations into the Z parameter type equations. Okay. So now you must understand in Z parameters, I1, I2 are your independent variables. V1, V2 are your dependent variables. So you have to modify these equations in such a format. So I know I2 is equal to H21, I1 plus H22, V2. So what I do is I just take this over here. So I get, sorry, I will get I2 is equal to minus H21, I1 equal to H22, V2. So I can rewrite, rewrite it as V2 is equal to minus H21 upon H22, I1 plus 1 upon H22, I2. Right, then I compare this, these two equations, and then by dividing the dividing the H two two in both sides. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Divide by H two two in both sides. So I get this equation. Then I know values of Z two one, Z two two. From that I can get H two one and H two two. Right. Oh. So then. Similarly, the first equation I modified. I have found V2 in terms of I1, I2. So I substitute that over here. Okay, once I do that, then I will get another set of equations, which is like this. And then I compare these two, and then I get Z11, Z12. Right? And from that, there I find H11, H12. Okay. So one thing I forgot to tell, to check is, what will be the dimension of Z of H22? Yeah, it what will be your dimension of H22? Yeah, it So oh, equal to 1 by Z11. Yeah, so dimension will be in terms of? Simon. Z11. Yeah, yeah. So ohm inverse. Oh, Simon's. Yeah, sorry. Okay. What will be your dimension of H21? Yeah, it's equal to yeah, this will have no, no dimension. It is dimensionless. What will be the dimension of H12? Again, dimensionless. And what will be the dimension of H11? Ohm. Ohm. Yeah. Okay, H11 is in terms of ohm. So, any queries? No, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, good. So, we'll go to the next question. So, uh, you have to find the H parameters. So, can anyone tell me what is the H parameters written as the equations for it is written as? 
V1 equal to H1 on I1. V1 is equal to H1 on I1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sir, if I am um, taking the, the first paper taking V2 R0, that means short circuit the secondary side, output side, mm -hmm. we get the relation. And again, if you are taking the input side, I1 equal to 0. Okay. You can also find. Sir, I think it is more easy, sir. It is a, in previous step, we are using the conversion method. Uh, okay. A, a, a hybrid parameter in terms of Z parameter. Okay. So if you know the direct formula, then we can directly put, putting the uh, conversion method, we can solve if Z parameter is found. Or, or we can just directly, okay, we will try solving. Okay, so I will suggest not to use the conversion method. Converting from one set of parameters to another set of parameters is not recommended because in the exam time, how will you remember the formula? How do you convert from Z parameters to H parameters? You may not remember. Y parameters to Z parameters is simple, just the inverse of a matrix. But for other things, it is not so easy. So what I recommend is you just solve this circuit. Okay. So you just apply KVL over here. What equation you will get? You will get. Okay, can anyone tell me what equation you will get? V1 minus pi i1 equals to 0. V1 minus pi i1 is equal to 0, right? So I can write it as V1 is equal to pi i1 plus. 0 into V2. Can I write it like this? Yes, sir. So I get my H11 is equal to 5 ohm. My H12 is equal to 0. Is there anything wrong in this? So, I got this now. I have to further mod. Now, we will do for the next over here. Over here, should I apply KBL or KCL or what would be better? KCL. Okay. Let me apply KCL. So I will apply KCL over here. So you must understand that this node and this and this, they are the same node. Okay, they are the reference node you can consider. So I apply KCL over here. Where I am marked X. So when I apply KCL at a node, what I will get Oh, you guys forgot KCL. I'm going to take it back as the reference mode. This is your reference mode, yeah. So what's the issue over here?
V2 minus point four V1. It will be what? Sorry. V2 minus point four V1. It will be V2 minus point four V1. Upon four. Upon four. Why? Sir, I'm confused. Did we take that as reference note? No. First of all, you must understand this is a current source. This is current. This also is some current, and there's some current flowing out. Right? So first what how much what is the current flowing in? This is the current flowing in and this is the current flowing in. So we have point four V1. Plus I2. Plus I2 equal to. Okay. That's the current flowing in. Is equal to what? The current flowing out. What is the current it, flowing out? Is equal to V2 by 4. V2 by 4. Okay. It is V2 by 4. Yes, right? sir. So you have. Yes, sir. 0.4 V1 plus I2 is equal to V2 by 4. You can, you can, now you have to write I2 is equal to minus 0.4 V1 plus V2 by 4. Now you can't compare because you want I2 in terms of I1 and V2. But you have got I2 in yes, terms sir. of I1 and V2. So what you will do then? Sir, we know that V1 equal to 5 by 1. Yeah. Put the value here. You will get minus 0. 0.4 V1 is 5 I1 plus 0. 0.25 V2. Right? So you get your I2 is equal to what is minus 0. 0.4 in minus 2 I minus 2. So there's minus two I one plus point two five V two. Okay, when you compare it with I two is equal to H two one I one. H two one equal to minus two. H two one is equal to minus two, and what is your H two two? H H two two equal to one by four. H two two is point two five Siemens. Ah, sir. Siemens, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you should not forget the units and dimensions. Although in my NPTEL, they usually tell it is then the answer. You don't have to specifically say ohms or anything, but when you're doing your normal BTEC exam and all that, that time it is required, no? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we solved it. This in half a page, we were able to solve this. This is a very, very simple question. So, Rol yes, almost always boils down to KVL and KC. Hmm. And just, you know, representing the equations in the form you want it to be shown as. Hmm. So, now we'll go to the next question. So if you consider this question, what do you have to find? You have to find out both the Z parameters as well as the Y parameters. Okay. So I uh, like uh, who and all has given the NPTEL exam till now? For any subject? No, sir. sir. No, sir. I'm given for not for this domain. Okay. So I'm asking, programming in Java. Programming in Java. Okay. So my question is, uh, do they show all the questions at a time or one question at a time comes on the screen? One question at a time. If we, we can see the question paper, but it is possible to view all the questions at the same time. Oh, okay. And you have to read it. 
Okay, then it is okay. Then it is simple. Mm. So now I'm saying, uh, you uh, you have to find z parameters and y parameters. If you find the y parameters, you will get z parameters. If you find z parameters, you can get the y parameters. No, that, no. Is, that is simple. Yes, sir. So now, which set of parameters, if you use, it will be easier to find. Which one do you think will be better and easier? Sir, um, z parameter is easier to find. If we convert the delta circuit in the star circuit, it is a T network. So it is very easy to find the Z parameter. Okay, I, I actually do not remember the formula to convert from delta to T. Can you tell me? Yes, so, sir. From uh, de delta to T, uh, the product um, of the cross arm 7 into 4 divided by sum of the 7 plus 4 plus 2. Uh, one minute. So let me let me just draw it in an easier way. This is your A. This is my C. This is my B. First, first, there's a delta. Now you're telling first, first, uh, de delta. You're saying to make it a T, right? T makes it something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. T makes yes, sir. A to C. Okay. Yes, sir. So, and then further, I have this 7 ohm. Right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's very easy, sir. Now, I need to find what is this resistance? Mm, from sir, A to sir, let middle point is O. A to O is 7 into 4 by yeah. 7 plus 4 plus 2. This much? Yes, sir. 7 into 4 by yeah. 7 plus 4 plus 2. Okay, so in this was 28 by, uh, 28 by 13. Okay, okay. What is from B to O? Mm, sir, B, B to O is 7 into 2. 7 into 2 divided by 7 plus 4 plus 2. Okay, 13. What is C to O? 14 by 13. Uh, sir, C to O is 4 into 2 okay. divided by 13. 8 by 13. So this is very good. So this I write it as 7 into 4 is 28 upon 13. This I write it as 8 upon 13 plus 7. And this is 14 upon 14 by 13. This is B. This is my A. Yes, sir. This is my reference ground. This is my B1. This is my I1. This is my this is my I2, right? So I write yes, it sir. as 28 by 13 is how much? Sir, we can also easily, it is a T network. Now we should directly found the Z parameter. Okay, one minute. This is 28 by 13. This is my 8 by 13 plus 7. 7 into 13 is how much? 91, right? Oh, so 91 upon 13 and this is no, no, no that is 99 by 13 99 by 13 okay 91 plus 8 so 99 by 13 so, uh, yeah. so 99 by 13 14 upon 13 so this is my plus minus v2 plus minus v1 this is your i1 this is your i2 right so yeah, so how how to find it for this one? What is your what is my Z11? Sir, sir um, Z plus Z B. 28 by 13 plus 19 um, by 13. Okay, so that is equal to 127 by 13. Yes, sir. Okay, what is 127 by 13? Nine point seven six. Nine point seven six. Okay. What is the Z one two? Sir, Z one two equal to Z two one equal to minus of ninety nine by thirteen. Why minus? Yes, sir. Minus. Sir, 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 is the, um, sir transfer impedance. That's why you said the minus. Z one two equal to Z two one equal to minus Z V. 
no if you apply kvl if you apply kvl over here okay this v1 is 28 by 13 i1 plus 19 n by 13 i1 plus 19 n by 13 i2 right so it should be plus And what the formula says that and say it is a tail network. Yeah, so this is plus. It is plus, right? If you apply KVL. Fine. If you apply KVL, it is 28 by 13 I1 plus 19 N by 13 into I1 plus I2. So your V1 is 28 by 13 I1 plus 9 28 by 13 plus 19 N by 13 I into I1 plus 19 N by 13 I2. I said. Mm. So this actually is equal to 99 by 13. So what is 99 by 13? Uh, 7.615. 7.6615. Okay. The ohm, huh? I forgot ohm. So what is your Z22? That should be V2 by 2 that would be 14 by 13. Mm. 13. That is 113 by 13. And that is equal to how much? 8.69. Ohm. Okay. So now we found the matrix Z. Matrix Z is actually equal to Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22. My Z11 is actually equal to 1, 127 by 13. 9, 9 by 13. 99 by 13. 99 by 13. And 113 by 13. Okay, I prefer to write in fractional form because then you do not use these extra. Um, uh, uh, lower bits, lower values. Okay, because we have, we have to find inverse everything. Now you want to find the what is the determinant of z over here? So one one three by thirteen into one two seven by thirteen uh, minus ninety nine by thirteen into ninety nine by thirteen. Okay, so what is the numerator? It's 13. Hmm? 13 square. I asked numerator, numerator. Uh, so, numerator is sir. Calculator, sir. Oh, you don't have calculator. Yes, so four double five zero. Okay, four double five zero zero upon thirteen square. Okay. So my y is actually equal to z inverse. So that will be equal to addition of z by determinant of z. 113 by 13 minus 99 by 13 minus 99 by 13 and 127 by 13 divided by 4550 by 13 square. Okay. So I will get it to be y is equal to This actually is equal to 113 by 13 into 13 square into 4550 minus 99 into 13 square 113 into 4550. Similarly, here minus 99 upon 13 into 13 square on 4550. Here 127 into 13 square. 13 into 4550. Five, so it comes out to be y is equal to 113 into 13 upon 4550 five, 
minus 99 into 13 upon 4550 minus 99 into 13 upon 4550 and 127 into 13 upon 4550. Okay. So what is the value of y? Now you find it in fractions. How much it is? 0 0.32 0 0.32 28 0 0.3228 okay point two eight two eight so this minus point two eight eight two eight two eight there also will be minus point two eight two eight and in the last one it will be point three six two eight Point three six two eight. Okay. Wait. Yeah. So what if we don't know that formula? Let us say. Which one? Uh, delta to star connection. Uh, if you don't know, then you'll have to solve it. So you'll have to. So then, uh, so if you don't know what you will do now. If you forgot the formula, what can you do? Because I didn't, I don't know this formula, but then Uta is an expert, so he told, and it made it very easy. So now, I, suppose you don't know, how would you solve? Am I applying KVL, sir? You apply KVL, you will have to apply KVL over here, over here, and over here, right? Okay. This is how you will have to apply. Then you'll have to also assume on some current I3 over here. See, this is I1 current. This is I2 current. So then there'll be a current I3 as well. Then you will find I3 in terms of I1, I2, and then you substitute here. So that is one method. Okay. So you have to assume I1, I2 current, I3 current. Then when you apply KVL in this loop, you will get I3 in terms of some Xi1 plus Yi2. And that you will substitute in this in this KVL as well as in this KVL. Then you will get a V1 in terms of I1, I2, V2 in terms of I1, I2. That is one way. Okay. That also is a good way. There's nothing wrong. It will also give you the answer. Another way which what I did was uh, I assume some voltage Vx over here Vx. Okay. And I found Vx in terms of V1 and V2. And then I found L1 in terms of V1, V2, and Vx. And then I substitute the value of Vx here. And I found I1 in terms of V1 and V2. So it is also similar. You either do KCL or you apply KVL. Both you can apply. Okay. Okay, but if you have the cheat code like put, put a hand, then it makes it simple, okay? You can go into turbo speed and all. So okay. And the, the Z minimum parameters uh, we are taking that V1 by I1 uh, from that uh, we are taking it. Which one, which one? Z11, Z12. Over here? Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. No, you write the equation in terms of V11 as some V into I11 plus V into a into I1 plus B into I2, right? So your A is actually your Z11 and your B is actually your Z12. It is KVL, okay. right? Yeah, from KVL. KVL. Yes. So is this network a reciprocal network? Uh, 
Huh? Is it a reciprocal network or a hybrid network? Yeah. Sir, yeah. what is a reciprocal Z network? Reciprocal? Z network. Z parameter network is reciprocal. What about in Y parameters? Oh, Y parameters is also, sorry, oh, it is also reciprocal. Yeah, if it is reciprocal in any parameter, if it is reciprocal in Z, it will has to be Z, Z1 to equal to Z21. Condition, sir, Z1 to equal to Z21. Yeah, so it satisfies then it is reciprocal because Z12 is equal to Z21. Also, if you see carefully, where y12 is equal to y21. So if it is reciprocal in z parameter, it will be reciprocal in y parameter, it will be reciprocal in h parameter also. Okay. And it will be yes, reciprocal sir. in ABCD parameter as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Is it a symmetrical? Yes, sir. Is it a symmetrical network? Hmm. No. No, it is not a symmetrical network. Because your y11 is not equal to your y22. Y22, yes, sir. Hmm. And also, if you see your z11 also is not equal to your z22. Yes, hmm. sir. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, like, uh, what happened today? Like, the class, like, very few people have come. Usually at least two or three people more come. What happened? Uh -huh. Sir, we are a hostel from different districts. So how sir we can tell him? Oh, okay. So you all are all disconnected. Sir, we don't know. We don't know each other. Achha, you don't know each other. Every week but you are coming and yes. joining. Huh? But, hmm. Moreover, okay. we just know the names. We know each other's names, but okay, you can you can introduce yourself to each other now. I'm giving you the opportunity. Huh? No, before that, I have a question related to the previous week assignment. Okay, uh, whatever. Uh, so in that uh, question number maybe nine, eight, I guess, the like previous question that okay. Before. Uh -huh. There was some sign discrepancy, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, they are asking estimate the electrical power consumed or dissipated by the two resistors. Okay. Okay. So uh -huh. it is supposed to be negative, but in no, the no, answers no. I'm seeing that okay. Only positive, you know. Okay. They are saying electrical power consumed. Right. So consumed or dissipated. Consumed oh, or dissipated. Dissipated, right. So yeah. you know your resistor. Your resistor, it will not deliver power. It will Correct. not deliver power. It is going to only consume right. power, right? Correct. So yes. the power it will consume will be positive only. It cannot be negative. See, you are, you are confused with the fact that suppose you have a voltage source V1, right? And if the current mm -hmm. is flowing into it, that means what? It is consuming power. It is consuming. Correct. Right. So how much power is it consuming? It is consuming into I1. I1. Yes. So but this should it be positive or negative here? A positive. It will be positive. It is positive, sir. E1 I1 power. But how much power is it delivering? If you say delivering power, it is delivering minus V1 I1 power. Okay. But you know, yes, in the same in the same then. Okay, uh -huh. so they are they are talking uh, supplied or generated uh -huh. uh, by the independent source. Uh -huh. There, the answer is two, three, six, two, positive. They are giving in the same question. Okay. So uh -huh. if the, if this is the case, right? Power uh -huh. supplied or generated? You know, uh -huh. uh, can we open? Can we open that question? Uh, okay. One second. Let's open. Yeah. So week nine, right? Yeah, week nine. Uh, yes, week nine. So week, convention... 
So if you see over here, you are, is it is this V one consuming power or generating power? Delivering power. Okay, let us go to delivering what? power. They are asking estimate electrical power supplied by the independent source. So how much mm -hmm. power it is supplying? It is supplying power. Twenty into V one. Uh, not don't have the power. Right, twenty into V one. It is twenty into I one is the power it is delivering. Right? Yeah, right. If your e yeah. I one is going out, that means it is delivering twenty I one. If the I one is coming inside, it is minus twenty into I one. Hmm. Now assume your question was written. Estimate electrical power consumed. No, no. Supplied or generated. Ah, but, but okay. Of course, it told you must find electrical power consumed by this independent source. Then your mm -hmm. power will be minus twenty into I one. Right. Yes. Right, that is the convention. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So now, for your resistor, for your resistors, they are saying what is the power consumed by the two resistors? So power consumed by resistors is always given by I square into R, right? So it will yeah, always right. Suppose they told by chance, estimate electrical power generated by the two resistors, then it will be minus I square R. Hmm. But that is uh, not practical. They cannot ask such a question. Okay. Yeah, but while we were solving this question, even I got negative values for this question. Then I just crossed the trip somewhere else and I just wrote plus. Oh, I think why you got, why you got was you did voltage into current. You did voltage into current. Maybe I don't know. You would have done I think V four into I four, or you would have done V two into I two. If you did that, then you'll get negative. Right. Not V four into I four, V five into I five. If you did that, probably you would have got negative. Yeah, maybe that's what. You can recheck, okay? I'll close it. But uh, we should be able to see that. Uh, the total power consumed uh, is equal to power power delivered by the network, right? So uh, with all the all the sources, so even try to check that. In that case, also it is not matching when we give uh, that positive sign by the uh, resistor. Oh, it is matching. That, Let us see. Power delivered by your by your voltage source is three point four kilowatt. Yeah. Uh, it's not embedded. Uh, this is 3.4 kilowatt is the power delivered by this okay power delivered by this now your current source is not consuming any power because the current uh, voltage across the okay okay mm -hmm. now dependent voltage source is consuming v4 into minus i4 right because your i4 okay. is coming into it so the power being right. delivered by it is V4 into minus of I4. That, mm, right. that V4 into minus I4, you get it to be minus 3120 watt. So it is delivering three minus 3120 watt, means it is consuming 3120 watt. Right? Mm, right. Okay, so it is consuming 3120 watt. And then for the resistors consuming, you find that to be 280. So what is 3120 plus 280? That is zero. No, no, no. Uh, here, why, why are we adding that one positive uh, one and another one negative? Right? Delivering or consuming minus 3120 and we are adding one positive, right? 280. Yes, yes, yes. So should be able to... No, no, no. The power consumed by this voltage source is what? It is 3120 watt, right? The power delivered by the voltage source is minus 3120 watt. The power consumed by this voltage source is 3120 watt. Okay. Okay. There are two things I said. If it is delivering, so the amount of power it is delivering is minus 3120 watt. And the minus sign indicates that it is not delivering power, it is actually consuming power. 
So from that, I, I conclude that the power which is being consumed by this is 3120 watt. Hmm? Now, the power consumed by my resistors is 280 watt. So the total power consumed in my circuit is 3120 plus 280, that is 3400. Okay. And that is the actual power being delivered by my this voltage source, that is 3.4 kilowatt. So we should not take that V into I value over there while calculating the power consumed by the resistor. No, no, I'm not saying. No, yeah, yeah, you must not take V into I. V into I must not. You must do I square R. Hmm. So what happens if we take V into I value? V, I find to B5? Even if you take V into I, it will become positive only. Even if you take V into I, it will become positive. Because this will be... What is V5? Two into I two, I two is ten amperes. Two into I two is twenty, right? Okay. So uh, the voltage across, voltage across V five is twenty. Yeah. So twenty into two, so that is forty. So twenty into twenty. 20. No, it is four into five. No, no it is ten into two. So twenty twenty volt into ten amperes. That is two hundred. That is positive only. It will, all, it will be positive only. If you do V into I or I into or I square R, it will come, still come positive only. Sorry, sir, but can you repeat what you just said? If you have V is equal to I into R, right? So, yes, and you also have V into I, right? V into I is your power, okay? So if your I if your I is negative, then your V also will be negative. And one negative into negative will always be positive. Like there are two cases. Your I is negative. If your I is negative, that means your V also is negative. That means your power is positive. The next case is I is positive. If I is positive means your V also has to be positive. That means your power still is positive. So in any case, it will be positive only. Power will be positive. Any query in this? No, no. Not sure. Okay. So it's a 8 p.m. So we'll end today's meeting. Huh? So okay. what happened to the big 10 thing? Okay. Okay, just there. Just there. Okay. Hmm. okay, so I'll end today's meeting now. So I'll end today's meeting. Hmm. Okay. okay. So we'll meet next week. Hmm. Thank you. Sir. Good night. Take care. Thank you very much.